I'm here in San Francisco where LG has kindly provided us with the opportunity to spend some time with the LG 2017 OLED televisions and in this video, I'm going to go through the video settings to see what has changed versus the 2016 models. Coming right up! Hello everyone, this is Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test. I'm a professional TV reviewer and calibrator. In this channel, we do scientific TV reviews, video interviews, unboxing videos, and also settings tips and tricks. So if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing by clicking this button below. So here we have the LG Signature W series of OLED television, which is the company's flagship for 2017. We will go through the design and other picture quality aspects uh, in another video. But in this video, we are going to focus entirely on the user menu changes that the company has actually implemented for this year. The user menu changes should apply across the entire range, the B7, the C7, the E7 and the G7 series because all of them share the same system on chip. They have the same video processor and show should ensure identical picture quality. So let's get into the user menu. If we press the long press the settings button, uh, we can go into the ISF Expert Darkroom mode, which is the most accurate picture preset out of the box. And if we go down, what we will see is that under the expert controls here, color gamut. Remember previously it was label as color gamut normal, extended or wide in terms of the options and we have actually done a video explaining why color gamut normal is the correct setting but it can be quite confusing because some users were using color gamut white to try and replicate the white color gamut but that is not the correct approach. The correct approach was to use color gamut normal. This year, the company has listened to feedback and relabeled color gamut normal to auto which makes far more sense because when you set color gamut to auto what the television will do is to automatically switch its color gamut mapping to either SDR, standard dynamic range image, uh, Rec 709 or HDR, high dynamic range, DCI-P3 within Rec 2020 container when it detects the correct AVI info frame. So set it to auto, which is the correct way, which tells the television to switch automatically between SDR and HDR color mapping. Going through other aspects of the user menu again, uh, we can see that it still keeps the same Gamma BT186 as default, white balance, okay and let's go through the color management system where i can see that there is still no way for us to copy the settings to all the other inputs this is something that we have fed back to lg and hopefully they will improve this on their 2018 models if you pay attention here apply to all inputs actually only apply the first page of the settings to all other sources and then under the white balance if we go into the white balance sub menu you can see that under the two point white balance there is one apply to all inputs function and then you have to do that separately for the 20 point function and then you have to click this again so you have to click it three times to copy it across and even then the tv won't copy all the settings across because the settings within the picture options will remain independent per input there's no way to copy this with one click of the button so this is an area of improvement that certainly lg can implement let's try and put in HDR content in terms of HLG, HDR10 and also Dolby Vision content to see what we get. LG's 2017 OLED TVs will support three HDR formats out of the box, namely HDR10, HLG or Hybrid Log Gamma and Dolby Vision. Support for Technicolor is due to arrive at a later date following a firmware upgrade. Now, I'm playing a HDR10 video clip here through the USB port. Let's see what has changed in the user menu. First things first, what we notice is that there will be more picture mode compared to the year before. There's Vivid, Standard, Cinema Home, Cinema and Game and I believe that it will default to Cinema Home out of the box. But the most accurate picture preset for HDR at the very least to reproduce the artistic intent is Cinema Mode. So let's go into Cinema Mode where we will explore various options here. Let's go into the expert settings. Now I need to explain a bit about dynamic contrast in HDR mode. LG has implemented a feature called Active HDR on their 2017 OLEDs. Active HDR actually tries to simulate dynamic metadata from static metadata from let's say 
streaming services and also 4K Ultra HD Blu-rays. Now, the way to engage Active HDR because it was too late uh, in the development cycle to introduce a new menu option, so they repurposed a dynamic contrast to activate and deactivate Active HDR. So off is clearly to switch off Active HDR, and if you want to switch on Active HDR, set it to low, to dynamic contrast low, which will extract the static metadata from all these 4K HDR content and try and analyze it and simulate a dynamic metadata output so that the TV will create a better picture. But you know, in terms of preserving the artistic intent, we will probably just uh, switch a dynamic contrast or active HDR off. If we go down here and go into the white balance submenu, you can see that new to 2017 sets, LG has implemented a two-point white balance controls in HDR mode. This will allow us to get a more accurate grayscale when you're watching HDR content. And if we go into the 20-point color, it's still based on code value, which is the signal that HDR10 is based upon. But if we go into the individual code value, on last year's model, the maximum code value that that the TVs actually go up to is around 668 but this year LG has gone all the way up to 1023 which is a 100% stimulus uh, and increase in terms of the range that you can actually adjust for the 20 point white balance. Okay and that's uh, for HDR10. Let's move on to HLG to see what has changed. Here, I'm going to play a clip called Travel XP that has been encoded in HLG. And you can clearly see that the TV goes into HDR mode, meaning that it has correctly detected the HLG format and is uh, displaying it with the correct formula. If we go into the picture menu settings, what we can see is that because I've purposely set sharpness to 28 when we were doing HDR10 mode, and it is still maintaining the same sharpness setting, which means that the values are all shared between HDR10 mode and also HLG mode within the same input. Uh, let's go through the two expert controls and see what we can or cannot do. If we go into the white balance submenu, what we can see here is that the 2-point and 20-point white balance are all grayed out. Hopefully that means that it will just basically use the settings when we have calibrated for HDR10. Let's move on to Dolby Vision. LG has had a very good partnership with Dolby for some time now. And what we are going to play here is a Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos clip. If we play it through the USB drive, you can clearly see the Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos uh, notification with the Dolby logo appearing on the top right of the screen. And let's go through the menu settings and see what's new. It defaults to cinema home mode. And again, you can see that under the Dolby Vision picture mode, there's vivid standard cinema home, cinema and game. Cinema is going to be the most accurate to the director's intent. Let's go to cinema. And one thing that I need to explain about OLED light that even ourselves didn't realize until yesterday was that LG and Dolby has repurposed OLED light. Previously, we always thought that OLED light is like a backlight function on LED LCD. You can use that to increase or decrease the light output on screen. But what Dolby and LG has done on the LG OLEDs this even applies to the 2016 models, is that the OLED light has been repurposed to actually dictate the APL to increase or decrease the average picture level or the average brightness of the scene, which explains why sometimes we can't even see an increase or decrease in brightness, even though we jacked up OLED light to 100 because it is just detecting the APL. It does not function like a traditional backlight that we understand from the standard dynamic mode all that light, it basically increases or decreases the APL output. If we go down again to the expert controls, you will see that new to 2017, we can adjust 20 point white balance uh, in the Dolby Vision Cinema preset and color management system, we can have access to it as well. Previously, I think on 2016 models, the white balance values are locked out, but on 2017 sets, at least, LG has provided us with 20 point white balance adjustments. 
That was a quick rundown of the new changes in the user menu settings for LG's 2017 OLED televisions. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel if you have not subscribed yet to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.